you said I can get into this game $50,000. What type of truck does that buy me? That's going to buy you an older truck, for sure. I mean, okay, you're not going to get- There's so many different types of truck. And what I mean by this is, is it a box truck? Is that a nah, trailer? That, that, again, it depends on what you want to do. So now if you add the trailer, that's 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 another cost too. So, okay. all right. So, so, so- you have box trucks, you have um, semi trucks, you know, the combination trucks. Mm -hmm. When I say you get in 50,000, you could you could get in on either of those fronts. If you want to buy a box truck or you want to buy a semi truck, but you're going to be buying an older truck. A brand new truck could run you anywhere from 100 to $120,000. You know what I'm saying? For a brand new 2022, 20 truck, that, that's what you're going to be paying. Um, and depend, depending on your specs, like if it's specced out, you know what I mean? You know, everything in it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run you some money. So if you're getting an older truck, that's what I'm saying. Just to get into the game at the bare minimum, that's what you're going to need. Probably around that, that, that 50, 50 grand to be in a, a, a decently comfortable place. And I mean, obviously, there's different ways you could get in. You don't have to spend all your money on the truck. There's different companies that offer financing where you can just, you know, put a down payment on the truck to where as opposed to spending, you know, uh, 30 grand on the truck, you could put down five, six thousand dollars in and walk away with the truck. You know what I mean? It just depends on how you situate yourself in order to make it happen and and, and what your finances look like. Obviously things play into that like credit, um, you know, your, your your personal financial outlook. So it just really depends on where you are at, at, as a business and then what you want to do with the truck. Um, and, and that's really the key. Like a lot of people just think the trucking industry and they're like, all right, you know, I want to get into the trucking industry, but it's like, all right, cool. But you want to get into the truck, but what do you want to do? Like you just now said, box trucks. Box trucks is like what they call like last mile, final final mile, like where you're where you where, where you're delivering short sh shorter deliveries, right? Like delivering to houses or going from uh you know different uh, uh dock to dock deliveries, and it's it's shorter shorter uh, mileage, and you could do it in a box truck. Like what a box truck basically is is the overage that can't fit on the the, the 48 foot or 53 foot trailer, they're putting that on the box truck. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to the same places, but it can't fit on the bigger trucks because it's too much. So now they have to get a box truck and they're going to pay the box truck less, right? But they still have to get that um, that freight moved as well. So you can do box trucks. Um, that's actually a great way to get started because it's cheaper um, to, to purchase a bo box truck. And also you can drive a box truck without a CDL. You know, so you could even get into the game without a CDL with a box truck. Um, so, I mean, it just, like I said, it's so vast. It really depends on what you want to do. Because it's, it's hard to give a one-size-fit-all mm -hmm. answer because mm -hmm. it's just so many different niches. You know what I mean? Okay. So, say I got my truck, <clears throat> right? Just, just for lack of a better example, let's stick with the box truck. Yeah. Driving locally. Because I'm assuming box trucks, you're not doing OTR. You, you, know, you, do, you do OTR on box trucks too. Oh, you can do it? Okay. Yeah, so let's just say local and regional, just for this yeah. example. I'm happy. I now own my own truck. What do I do now? Where, where, give, give, give me the best places that Sean Prez, I got my truck, I'm happy, I'm, I'm up and running. Right. Where do I find my loads? What, what, what do I do? How do I... Like I'm, I'm open for business, guys. Right. I'm right. ready to work. Where, where yeah. do I find these loads at? Yeah. So, so there's, so there's two different ways you go about it. The, the one way you could do is what we talked about earlier, where you lease on with a company who already has loads, right? So you could lease, lease on your, lease your truck on with a carrier, right? Who already has trailer loads to be pulled, and basically you're partnering your business with their business, and you're pulling their freight. Right, so your expenses are going to be a little bit lower because you don't have to have your own authority to do that. You're going to pull their freight, but you're not going to make as much money up front because they're the middleman. They're getting the freight from a shipper there, and then they're allocating that freight to the people who pull the loads for them. Right, so that's one way you can do it. If you want to go out on your own, there's what they call a load board. That's how most people start. Right, so what a load board is is it's a place where shippers right? Shippers who are places like distribution centers, people who have freight. Give me one second. You, you, you're speaking above most of our heads. Okay, Remember, okay. this is 101. Okay. What is shippers? Okay. 
explain <laughs> got all you. different terminologies. Got you, got you, got you. So a shipper would be like Amazon, right? Amazon could be like an example of a shipper, right? A shipper is a, a, a warehouse with, uh, with, with, with cargo in it and goods in it, right? Whether it's dry goods, whether it's uh, cold store, whether it's cold goods, refrigerated goods, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's a warehouse in a place where there are goods and that's gonna be the shipper. That building that holds all those goods that needs to be put on the truck to go from point A to point B, right? Okay. So- Who's your carrier? So the carrier is going to be the company that's gonna be hauling those goods. That's gonna be pulling those goods on a truck. Right, so the carrier is going to be the the trucking company. Like, what's a trucking company you've heard of before? Give me, give me a, a company you've seen on the road. Uh, damn, man. Right? Old Dominion, maybe Swift. Yeah. Uh, JB Hunt. You ever? Okay. The, these guys are carriers. Usually, like when you see the 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 sign on the side of the trailer, whatever that name is, that's the carrier. So, so their job is to basically have relationships with these shippers, right, to be able to haul this freight because a shipper just has the warehouse with the freight and they need to get that freight somewhere else. They don't have the truck to do it in some cases. So that's where you come in as a carrier to take that freight from point A to point B, right? Gotcha. So, so in, in some cases, just getting started, it started out, if you get your own truck, you can partner with a carrier, which is what they call leasing on to where you, you, you go underneath their insurance and their authority right? They're privileged to pull these loads, right? And you pull loads for them, right? And, 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 and so that's how you get in. That's how you get your loads. So the relationship there is you have the truck and the driver. They have the relationship with the shipper and the loads. You take your truck and your driver, you go to their shippers and you pull those loads for them. That shipper pays them and then they pay you. Got, Got it. it? All right. You started cool. talking about low boards. Can we yep. lock in on that for, for before I move this interview on? Yeah. So so the other way to do it, if you if you do have your own authority, right, and you're working for yourself. So now you're the carrier, right? You have your own truck, you have your own trailer. Sean Prez transportation is on the side of the truck, right? That's when a lot of people use load boards. What load boards are is basically a platform, right? It's like almost like Facebook for the trucking industry, right? You have all the shippers and the brokers. Brokers are people who have relationships with shippers who are brokering loads for, on behalf of the shippers, right? So you have the brokers and the shippers posting their loads on this platform at a price, mm -hmm. right? And they're saying, we're willing to pay you this amount of, of money to haul this freight from point A to point B. This freight will be available on Monday at this time, right? You need this particular type of trailer, this particular type of equipment. It has to meet this size requirements. And if you meet all that criteria, you can then bid on this particular freight to run this load for me. So that's what, so, so on the other side, it's a two-sided marketplace. You have the shippers and you have the brokers, and then you have the carriers competing for that freight. So they're getting on the load board, they're saying, all right, let me see. All right, there's a load in Florida that's paying $1,000 to go from, and I'm just using numbers here, so you know this is just whatever. It's paying me $1,000 to go from Florida to South Carolina. And you get on there and you say, all right, that's a good load to me, I'm gonna take that. My truck can make money by taking that load. Right, so you accept that load. So then the transaction comes to where you reach out to that shipper or that broker and you say, hey, I'm interested in that load, right? And they say, okay, you're interested in it. You can, now you can negotiate on price, right? Where you say, I like that load, but a thousand is a little too low for me, I need 1200. They can say yes or no. Once you guys come to an agreement on price, the load is done. They send what they call a rate confirmation, which is basically, an acceptance of the 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 that you accept this load and you're taking possession of this load. So now it's your responsibility until it gets to the um, until it gets to point B, right? And then you take that load. That's how the load board works. And then when you get to that point, you can jump on the load board again or pre-plan a load coming out of 
South Carolina to get you to your next point. So that's how you kind of work the load board. What a lot of people like to do is they like to build relationships to get what they call dedicated lanes, which is where they have shippers or brokers that they work with on a consistent basis all the time to where they're not always looking for the work, but they have their work pre-planned for the week or for the month or for the next six months. So they know they're gonna be running that same lane every single time. And now they don't have to be searching and finding and negotiating and pretty much bottom feeding because a lot of freight doesn't even make it to the load board. A lot of times freight will make it to the load board after the direct ship, the direct relationships aren't working. The direct relationships don't have enough capacity. So we're gonna post this on a load board to see what trucker or what carrier will take it because our direct relationships, we have nobody. We have too much freight. We don't have enough trucks. Now we gotta post it. So ultimately what you want to get to is to a point to where you build rapport and you have direct relationships with customers to where you don't have to necessarily use that load board or when you use it, it's a last resort. You know what I mean? Because now you have now you have consistent freight and now you have that relationship to where you know where your freight's coming from. And now you can project your money a little bit better, right? You know how much you're going to make on that specific lane. You can, you, you could, uh, you know, look at, you know, your fuel costs and you could kind of do a, a real live uh, p and and kind of figure out what you're going to be spending on that lane. And you'll know what your money's going to look like at the end of the week or at the end of the, at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So that's ultimately probably where you want to get. But a lot of people start off working those load boards and there's different load boards out there like that. Um, Trucker's Edge, like there's, there's, there's a bunch of load boards. People can Google load boards and they'll see what they are. But basically what it is a platform, a two-sided marketplace for carriers and shippers and brokers to be able to connect. Okay, beautiful. You just answered my next question, which was, where the hell do I even find a load board at? <laughs> like, so I can go ahead and Google that. Yeah, you Google Google load boards and you'll find a bunch that pop up. Okay, what about negotiating your fee? Mm -hmm. um, what is that based on? And, and, and I, wanna, I want you to break it down, like the pros and the cons, because is there a set fee? Um, in the industry from driving from one place to another, do, do the, the drivers charge based on mileage? Is there a pro and a con to that? Is there yeah. a pro and a con to basing your fee on a percentage? Like what, what does that look like? And, and do Sean, who's just getting into business, do I have any negotiating power? Like, or, or do they look at me like, uh, Give me the little pat on the head, like you. You should be happy we're even using you. You don't. You don't even have no miles under your belt, right? So, with, with, with negotiation, it's all about like in any business, it's all about supply and demand, right? If 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 the the more trucks that are in a particular area, right? If there's more trucks, the 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 shipper or the broker are, are they're able to pay less because there's more supply. The less trucks, they have to pay more because there's less supply. So if you're in a, if you happen to be in an area where there's a lot of freight but not a lot of trucks, you'll be able to charge more obviously because they're trying to get their freight out but there's no trucks. So if you're the one truck that's there that's going to take it, you could charge a premium because ultimately they got to get that freight move. So you have that negotiating power. On the reverse side, if it's a whole bunch of trucks, right, in a in a specific area and not a lot of freight. Well, if it's a whole bunch of trucks, basically it's, it's, it's reverse to where you can't charge it as much because they, you're not the only game in town. If you say no, they can reach out to somebody else. You know, so at that point, they have more flexibility in terms of their negotiating, um, you know, their negotiating power. So they have leverage. You know what I mean? But it's always, it's always negotiating. Like they say, you get what you negotiate, not what you deserve. <laughs> you know what I'm gotcha. saying? So it's always going to be ne negotiating and that's going to be just based on, you know, the different variables that's go happening at that time, especially if you're working, if you're working a load board, it's like based on what's going on at that current moment. Now, you know, what kind of negotiating power you have and on the load board itself, it tells you what the going rate is for the, for the, for the, for the lane. So like when you look at that load, it'll say this load pays typically about 1200. So you have an idea 
or what you can what you can charge for that rate, but that doesn't mean you're gonna you're gonna charge that or you're gonna get that. It's all a matter of what's going on in that current moment and in the market at the time. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.